Hey friends, this is Chris again. Last time I left you with a WordPress blog that we had redirected a domain name to. Uh, however, there's some issues with it. For instance, this domain is not secure. And actually, even uh, you may have this issue as well. Even though I redirected a domain name to it, I often will still get the IP address. So we need to do a couple of things. We need to fix that uh, IP address thing, and we need to add HTTPS to this website. But before I can add HTTPS, I need to do a little bit of extra work to prepare. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an Nginx proxy in front of this. So before I go into that, let's fix this quick little problem. We have to go into the admin console for our site. You may be uh, presented with a login screen, that's fine. And if we go under settings and go to general, you notice here there's a section for WordPress URL and site address URL. So you should change these to match the actual domain that you've set up. So last videos I'd use devbasemedia.com. I'm using a different one today. That's fine because you're going to have a different domain name as well. So I just set those, go down and save the changes. Okay, so now after saving the changes, if I go to the website, we should see that the domain is preserved. So that's the first little change, really easy. The second change we need to make is we need to put an Nginx reverse proxy in front of this first. You might ask, well, why, why, why am I doing that? The website works perfectly fine. Well, ultimately we want to secure this website and it's easiest to secure it if we interact with uh, Nginx. So you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's draw a little diagram. All right, so if you think about the way things are set up today, we know that WordPress is running inside Docker and it's exposing itself on port 80, which is the normal port for web traffic. So if anyone comes along, they uh, will type in the domain name and ultimately they'll be directed to our WordPress instance running on port 80. What we wanna do is we wanna put something in front of this that can intercept the, uh, the traffic from the internet and ensure that it's HTTPS secured. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and you're gonna get a nicer diagram. Okay, so through the magic of video editing, we've got an updated diagram. And what we're gonna have is we're gonna put a piece in between. So I've labeled this Nginx. Now what is Nginx? It's a web server. Uh, Nginx has uh, some additional functionality. It can actually act as a reverse proxy. That means that Nginx can accept all your traffic from the internet and then it can redirect all traffic to something in behind, okay? So our goal really is that Nginx should be accepting all traffic on port 80 for our domain. Then it's gonna have to act as a proxy in front of our actual WordPress instance. Now, problem number one, we know that two things can't run on the same port, right? So Nginx can't run on 80, WordPress can't run on 80. So what we're gonna do is we'll change WordPress to run on something like 8080, okay? And then what will happen is when we've done this, Nginx will be configured so that it knows that anything coming in for domain.com or whatever the domain is that we're, we're working with will actually flow all of its traffic through to port 8080 on our machine, which is our WordPress instance. So we're gonna do this because ultimately we're gonna change this so that it can accept also traffic on port 443, which is the secure port, but we need to set this up first. So how do we do this? Well, let's pop over to our Google Cloud platform and we need to SSH into our instance, of course. All right, so we're inside the instance. So we're gonna look around again. Remember, we have this WordPress Docker Compose uh, directory. If I go in there, if you recall, it's the docker-compose.yaml file that actually controls the way WordPress is configured. So if I open that up, you'll notice up at the top, it specifically has this instance running on port 80. So the way this actually works in Docker is we're exposing port 80 on our machine and that traffic is being directed to port 80 inside the Docker container, okay? So WordPress runs on port 80. It's assumed that WordPress is gonna be exposed on the normal internet port. What we can do is we can actually change this. What I'm saying is I wanna expose port 8080 on my physical machine and any traffic on port 8080 will direct to port 80 inside the Docker container. So if you don't know Docker that well, it's okay. Like you don't really need to understand the intimate details. All you really need to know is 
we're going to change our WordPress instance so it's going to run on port 8080. So if I save that, so this is a significant change to the way the Docker containers are set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a Docker compose down. What this will do is it will actually destroy the Docker containers uh, described in the Docker compose file. So the WordPress instance will disappear. It's essentially uninstalled. Now, don't worry, your data doesn't disappear because if I look inside this directory, I still have WP app, WP data. That stuff is the actual content of your WordPress blog. Um, but if I look at Docker PS right now, I'll see that I have no containers running because they're all, they're all deleted. If I do a Docker compose up minus D, everything will be recreated. And what's going to happen is everything will mount on top of what was already there. So what was already there was your existing blog. But the difference is if I do a Docker PS, just to see what's running, if I look at the WordPress instance right here, you'll notice that it's, it's telling me that it's exposing itself on port 8080, like publicly, and it's directing to port 80 inside the Docker container. So we actually have this running on 8080 right now. If I were to go back and try to hit this instance, it gives me an error. Of course, that's trying the wrong port. But this is trying, we try the port 80 port. Now you might think that you could just say port 8080, but when we set up this instance, we only exposed a couple of ports out to the public internet. Port 8080 was not exposed out to the public internet. So right now this website's actually not accessible. So I'm going to close that. So we're in an interesting situation. My website suddenly is not accessible. What do I do? Well, if I go back to my SSH instance, I need to install, first of all, Nginx. So I do sudo apt apt install yes engine x okay so engine x is set up and engine x by default runs on port 80 so what happens if i go and hit my website so i'm going to open it in a new private window the reason i'm doing this is because i might have some old garbage cached in my web browser if i just go to the domain now you'll notice that it goes directly to an nginx welcome screen so we know that nginx is running on port 80 and we've got this docker instance running on port 8080 and we can't access the docker instance on port 8080 how do we get to our wordpress instance all right so you're going to learn a little bit about, about nginx here so first of all where's all the nginx configuration if i go to etsy nginx do a list. You'll notice there's a, a directory called conf.d. So you think, oh, that's where the configuration is. But there's a couple of interesting website, or a couple of interesting directories here: sites available, sites enabled. So we want to set up a site available to the internet. Okay, that's going to pass. It's going to actually pass through our nginx instance. So if I go to sites available. Look at the directory listing. You notice there's a file in here called default. I'll open it in VI. So a lot of it's actually commented out. Um, but notice it's running on port 80. Okay. And actually, even this here is somewhat interesting. This root, this is where the HTML screen that we see right here is stored. If you want, you could go and edit that. But what we want to do is we want to make our new website available through Nginx. So what we need to do is we need to create a file uh, inside sites available. I'm going to say sudo vi. Again, you can use whatever whatever editor you're most comfortable with. Vi is a little bit awkward to use, but I'm used to it. Um, and you can name this whatever you like. I'm going to name it www.nickendell.com.conf because that is the website that I'm going to make available. So I want it to be very clear what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got an empty file here. And what I need to do is I need to set up this, this redirection. Okay, so let's type some magic words. So we're going to do a server configuration. And we need to enclose these in curly braces. And we can still say root is 
var www.html if we want. We're going to listen on port 80. A lot of this is just boilerplate stuff. I think this allows traffic in from anywhere to port 80, anywhere on the internet. Now, here's the first important piece, server name. So I'm going to say nickindel.com. OK, so that's the domain we're going to use. And we're also going to allow this. So if I arrive at the server, and I arrived at the server using one of these domain names, this is the configuration that's actually going to be picked up. OK, and I'm going to say starting from location forward slash, which is starting at any request, any URL on nickendell.com. Again, enclosed in curly braces. What we're going to do is we're going to say proxy pass. So we're going to pass all traffic through to HTTP 127.0.0.1 port 8080. All right. So as many of you may know, 127.0.0.1 is essentially local host. So it's saying if any traffic comes in for nickendell.com or www.nickendell.com on port 80, we want to pass the traffic through to myself, my own machine, on port 8080. We know what's running on my own machine on port 8080 is that WordPress instance. Okay. And we need to pass a few more things along. Okay. Okay. So this is all the configuration. Um, really all we're doing here on these set headers is we're making sure that the header information from the request is passed along to our WordPress instance on 8080. Uh, of course, I'll put all of this text into the, uh, the description of the video. So you don't need to type it all out yourself. And finally, I'm going to save that. If you had a problem saving it, it might be because you didn't sudo because this file is protected by root. I look. So I, st I now have nickendell.com.conf. This is still only in the sites available directory. We actually want to use sites enabled because we want to enable this. So if I go into sites enabled, so you notice what they have in here by default is this is actually a, a, a link, a symbolic link. So like this default link is pointing at the default file that's in sites available. So we're going to do something similar. OK, um, you may not be too familiar with symbolic links, but I'm going to essentially just create a pointer to another file. So I'm going to say link LN symbolic. So it's a symbolic link. And first I need to say what I'm going to link to. So it's going to be Etsy Nginx sites available www.nickendell.com.conf and I will call it in this directory www.nickendell.com.conf I got a permission denied because of course sudo I need to do this as root okay now if I look at the directory listing again I have a new one and if I cat that out I see the contents there. That's exactly what I typed. Now, Nginx needs to be restarted for this to take effect. So I need to say sudo service Nginx restart. Assuming all went well, assuming I have no syntax errors in here, uh, it will pick that up and be happy with it. So what happens now if I go to nickendell.com? And look at that. I actually have the contents of the blog. So what's happening is the traffic is actually flowing through Nginx. And as we saw, it's getting redirected to port 8080 inside this machine. Now, this is kind of interesting because it means I could actually run many different Docker instances on this machine. We have a WordPress instance here. We could have something else entirely running on this machine. And I could create additional domain configuration files. And if I owned more than one domain, I could say, yeah, yeah, I have... Um, abc.com running on port 80 and I want you to redirect it to 127.0.0.1 maybe 90.90 because I have another service running on this machine. Of course, I don't have to be limited to stuff running on this machine. If I had more than one machine available to me, maybe I created more than one VM on Google Cloud. Um, I actually could have a single 
front door with my with nginx i could pull traffic through from other other places but for now this is set up correctly okay like this is a website that is working and it's working through nginx so that positions us for the next step and that is actually to add https to this website and that's the subject that we will consider in the next video thank you for watching i really appreciate your views